Just like there is a need for auto insurance, there is also need for aviation insurance. Believe it or not, there are many aviation insurance claims filed each year. Planes or helicopters can have rough landings, run into each other on the landing strip, or become damaged by lightning, birds, and many other things. Just because you're in the sky where there is not a lot of traffic does not mean that you're not in need of proper insurance. While Nigerian airlines must not only insure, but reinsure their liabilities in the Lloyds of London insurance market, the foreign exchange stands in the way of premium payment. How can the country get out of the woods, especially in the face of a possible blacklist by Lloyds for failure to pay premiums promptly? This is our subject on the program. A warm welcome to Vision This Week on Channels Television. I'm Bukola Jo Okitsumbi. When a steel bird of this size takes to the skies, whether it rolled off the manufacturer's production line or it was leased, it certainly must have cover for its risk. This is called aviation insurance. Aviation insurance policies are distinctly different from those for other areas of transportation and tend to incorporate aviation terminology as well as terms, limits and clauses specific to aviation insurance. For example, a new Airbus 320 costs as much as $98 million. An A321 goes for $114.9 million. The Boeing 787-3 costs between $146 and $151.5 million. And for the 787-9, that goes for between $189 and $200 million. Covering this kind of risk becomes imperative. Aviation insurance was first introduced in the early years of the 20th century. The first ever aviation insurance policy was written by Lloyds of London in 1911. But the first specialist aviation insurers emerged in 1924. The Warsaw Convention was signed in 1929. It was an agreement to establish terms conditions and limitations of liability for carriage by air. This is the first recognition of the airline industry that exists today. The United States has a large percentage of the world's general aviation fleet and a huge established aviation market. The London insurance market is still the largest single centre for aviation insurance. The market is made up of the traditional Lloyds of London syndicates and numerous other traditional insurance markets. Throughout the rest of the world, there are national markets established in various countries, each dependent on the aviation activity within each country. Here in Nigeria, Lloyds of London has a lot of influence in the aviation insurance market. Recently, the London insurer threatened to blacklist Nigeria owing to what it called the lack of premium payment. Airlines in Nigeria say the issue of foreign exchange availability is also key to this payment. While the airlines and the federal government will have to find a way out of the woods, let's take a look at the types of aviation insurance. Passenger liability protects passengers traveling in the aircraft who are either injured or killed. In many countries, this coverage is mandatory only for commercial or large aircrafts. Coverage is often sold on the per seat basis with a specified limit for each passenger seat. Public Liability Insurance. This coverage, often referred to as third-party liability, covers aircraft owners for damage that their aircraft does to third-party property, such as houses, cars, crops, airport facilities, and other aircraft struck in collision. 
it does not provide coverage for damage to the insured aircraft itself or coverage for passengers injured on the insured aircraft. Public liability insurance is mandatory in most countries and is usually purchased in specified total amounts per incident, such as $1 million or $5 million. Other types include combined single limit, ground risk hull insurance and in-flight insurance.